Hey YouTube, what's going on? In this video, we're going to be talking about how to fill an array from user input. Seems pretty simple, but there's a couple gotchas that I thought I'd share with you guys. Hopefully this video is nice and helpful, but before we get started, please check out our sponsor. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So here is some code we have left over from the previous video. We have this nice function which will go through and print an array nice and pretty. My dog is drinking water and uh, he likes to do that when I'm trying to make a video for some reason. But anyways, inside of main we have some of this other code. Uh, we're going to get rid of that and we're going to keep this function call for right now because I wanted to show you something that is a little off topic but it's important to know. So here we are initializing an array with some elements. So let's say we had the size be 100. If we wanted to print this out, pass in 100 as the size, here's what's going to happen nothing too crazy. We're going to have a bunch of zeros. So when you only initialize part of the array, all of the other elements are zero. But the gotcha here is that if you don't initialize the array and just put a semicolon, you're just declaring the array, the values of the elements are undefined. And what that means is the actual result is unpredictable. So when we compile this and run, you can see we get a bunch of garbage. That's just a side note that I forgot to mention when we were talking about the basics of arrays. Don't expect all of the values to be zero unless you initialize part of the array. That might come up as you fill the array because you're probably not going to initialize it with some default values. We're probably going to just declare it and then start filling it one value at a time. Anything we don't fill, we can't assume that it's zero. It could be anything, as you guys can see. So as we work with this array, I'm actually going to take this size and put it in its own entity, uh, we're going to make a constant. So let's say const int size, I'm going to use all caps, and we're going to set it to the value 100. And then instead of using 100, you just put the value size. And we can pass in size as the argument there. I don't actually need to calculate the size here because we are manually defining the size here. We're not initializing it with a list of values. So it's very easy just to have that value hard coded and use that throughout our program. So I'm going to get rid of that line. All right, let's clear this mess out. And now let's talk about getting input and storing it in array. Here's what it's going to look like. We're going to get it from console in and we're going to store it inside of guesses. And now we need to do this inside of a loop because we need to go through all of the elements. So let's start with a for loop. I'm just gonna leave this here for a second. So we'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than size, i plus plus. Now we can take this code and paste that inside of the for loop. Oh, nice and pretty, <laughs> kidding, there we go. And then we need to put index i. All right, so let's just compile and run, just see what it looks like right now. When we run this, oh shoot, forgot that it was printing that array. Don't worry about all that garbage right now, we'll, we'll fix that up. It's just going to continually ask us for elements of our array and it'll just keep doing it. And we can exit this with control C. I'm going to take this print array I'm going to move it to the bottom and then I'm going to comment it out for right now. So this seems to work and this is the simple solution to your problem. So let's just go through an example with size 10 and we will print that array. Let's compile and run. We'll give it the values one through zero. And as soon as I hit zero, it prints all of those values. So it seems to be working. Awesome. There are a couple gotchas that I wanted to talk about. Specifically, when we're dealing with statically sized elements, we often make the size larger than it might need. That's because we don't necessarily know how much of the array the individual that's using it is going to need. If we're getting this from user input, they might only want to put three elements in there. They might want to put 300. It's hard to say. So what often happens is we make the size much larger than we might need. But the problem with this is that this for loop is going to go until we use all of these spots we might want to stop at some particular spot. And there's a little trick I'm going to show you guys on how to do that. You can actually take this console in and put it inside of an if statement. So it's going to look like this. In the case that this is true, that means the input worked. 
in the case that it's false, well, actually, this means it was an invalid character. So what we can do is we could tell the user to just put in their numbers, and as soon as they're done inputting their numbers, they could push like Q, for example. It doesn't matter what the character is as long as it's not a number. So in that situation, we can actually break from that loop. So let's run this and see what happens. I'm going to comment out this print array for a moment. We don't need that for this example. When we run this, we can put in as many elements as we want, and as soon as we're done, we can put in something like Q and press Enter, and you can see the application stops. So that's awesome. That's how you can stop the loop early with this if statement with the console in inside of the expression. And if you're wondering why this works, well, it's a little complicated, but I'll try to explain. When you run this operation, it's actually going to return C in. And C in will only evaluate to true if it properly stored its value inside of whatever you're trying to store it in. So I guess that's not terribly complicated. Basically, this is just going to evaluate to true if it worked and it'll be false if it did not work. And this is only going to work if we're working with numbers because that's what we're storing it in. We're storing it in an integer array. Now, the only other thing is when it comes to this print array, we're passing in the size, but the size is going to be, in this case, 100, which is going to print the entire array. We actually only want to print a portion of the array, the number of elements that we actually input into the array. So what we're going to do is create another variable and we'll just call it count and we'll set that equal to zero. And each time we get a number from input, we're just going to increase count. So we can just say count plus plus. And instead of passing size, we can pass count. Uncomment this array. And now let's run it and give it a try. A dot out. Let's put some numbers in there. And when we're done, we can press Q. And you can see it works properly printing one through five. There we go. Now we made our input a little bit more effective. This program seems to work just fine, but there's actually one problem with it. When this evaluates to false, C in is in a non-working state. What that means is there was an error in the input, it wasn't the correct type. That is going to remain that way until we clear that state. So what we can do is we can say C in dot clear. The other thing, when we put some junk here to end the loop, it's going to be left inside of the input stream. So what that means is, Next time we try to get some data, it's going to automatically grab that. So for example, what we can do is we can show you this. Let me just create a string. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this from console input. And then I want to output it. So when I compile and run this, and I put some data in here, and then I end the, uh, this, the loop by just putting some junk in there, what happens is when I press enter, it doesn't even ask me for console input. It just automatically grabs this junk and stores it inside of that test variable. So the leftover stuff inside of the input stream is not automatically removed. We actually have to manually do that. One way we can do this is to say cin.ignore, and then what we're going to pass into this function is the number of characters up until the new line. So that is one way that we can clear the input stream, and now it should ask us for this input here. Let's give it a try just to make sure. Oh, I got an issue. Ah, this is not supposed to be a string. It's supposed to be a character. My bad. Now we compile and run. Let's put the same data in there. And now let's just put some junk in there. When I press enter, you can see it pauses and is asking me to put input for this test variable. So all this junk that was left over, that has been cleared. And now I can put something else in here. And you can see it works. Now there might be an alternative slash better way of doing this CN ignore. You can see here, this is going to ignore 10,000 characters, but you know, what if they put 10,050 characters? What's that going to do? Well, there's actually a way to clear all of the characters. The syntax is not as pretty, so I'm just going to paste it in here and you can paste it yourself or write it down, I guess. <laughs> and what this is going to do is it's going to remove the maximum number of characters. And no, I totally did not get this from Stack Overflow. I I just intuitively knew how to do this. Now when you do this, you're going to have to include something. So go up to the top and say include limits. Awesome. Now we can get rid of this old ignore and this should work just the same way, but I think it's a little bit more safe. One, two, three, four, five. And then when we put some jargon in there, you can see it still asks us for the test variable. 
So it seems that everything is working and we effectively made a loop to input into an array. So that is how you do that guys. This is going to come up a lot also when we're working with other types of collections. So make sure you understand this content and if you have any issues or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe, you know, that helps out my channel and whatnot. All right, peace out guys.